Very few shoes live long enough to see themselves become sneaker icons. To me, there's a difference between being a classic and being an icon, and that is, when talking about a sneaker classic, you're talking about a shoe that is still good looking even decades after its initial release. But to become an icon, you need to have more than just the looks. You need to have been part of the moments that defined history at that time. Today we're going to talk about a shoe that has achieved this icon status. And the shoe I'm talking about is the Puma Suede. The story of the suede begins in 1948 with the split of the Dazzler brothers' business. After reoccurring arguments on how to run the business, both brothers agreed to split the company equally and then run their own half as a separate entity. Rudolf Dazzler would be the guy to form what we know today as Puma, and his brother Adolf would go on to form a company you might have heard of. That company was named Adidas. And here's another fun fact, since neither brother wanted to move from the town where they operated, which was named Herzogenaurach, the town itself became known as the town of bent necks because people would constantly look down at each other's shoes to see what brand people were supporting. I mean, it's not that different from what we know today, it's funny to see that brand loyalty was a thing even back in 1948. Puma had released some good shoes after they were originally formed, and they did see some success, but it wasn't until the 60s that their success really took off, and it all began with the release of the Puma Suede. The Puma Suede released in 1968, and it was a rather revolutionary shoe at the time, because up until this point, shoemakers had only ever used leather or canvas when making shoes, but the suede was made of, well, suede, and that made the people interested in the sneaker, because at the time, suede was seen as a material that was reserved for purses and the like, but the release of the Puma suede created a new wave in the way that sneakers were being made. But as every new shoe release, it needed some promotion, and boy did the Puma suede get it. During the same year at the 1968 Summer Olympics, Puma would sponsor the runners Tommy Smith and John Carlos with Puma Suede, who would both go on to win gold and bronze respectively, with Tommy Smith breaking the world record for the 200 meter sprint. Such an event would surely spark interest in the Puma Suede, and it did, but what happened next exceeded all expectations that Puma had for publicity, because after the two runners took the podium to receive their medals, they would go on to make the Black Power Salute as part of the civil rights movement that was going on at the time, and what shoe were they wearing during the whole stunt? You guessed it. It was the Puma Suede, and Rudolph could have asked for a better PR stunt, because if people hadn't heard of the Puma Suede before, they sure did now. Now, fast forwarding to the 1970s, Puma took another big leap in the sneaker industry that completely changed the game. Puma sponsored the at the time biggest NBA star, Walt Clyde Frazier. Now, Puma weren't the first ones to sponsor an NBA player, and they weren't the first ones to sponsor a black one either, but they were the first ever company to give out what would later become a staple of the sneaker industry. They gave Walt Frazier his own signature shoe called the Puma Clyde. Now, even though the Clyde was just an altered version of the Puma Suede, this was still a big deal, because it paved the way for what we today see as a big part of sneaker culture, and Puma were the first ones to do it. Throughout the 80s and 90s, the suede would play another integral part as the shoe of choice for many subcultures during this time. The 1980s saw the rise of b-boy culture, a subculture of overall hip-hop culture that during the time focused on breakdancing in the streets. B-boy culture not only focused on the movement themselves, but is also focused on a portrayal of character, and that character needed to be fresh. If you've seen anything hip-hop from the 1980s, you know what I'm talking about. Oversized tops, loud colors, and what better shoe to portray this kind of freshness than a shoe made from unconventional luxurious fabrics. The suede's overall design also helped its popularity with the b-boy crowd of the 80s and later on the skateboarding crowd of the 90s due to its wider space on the forefront part of the shoe. This made it easier to perform breakdancing movements and skateboarding tricks, and thus the suede would dominate all the way into the new millennia. Now, let's talk about the shoe itself, and unlike other shoes on this channel, what you see here is what you get. Coming in a rather thick rubber sole alongside a nice suede upper, the Puma suede is, in and of itself, a rather simple shoe. And when looking at sneakers today that utilizes all kinds of materials like velour, full grain leather, mesh, and all kinds of different materials, the suede was the first one to break out of the traditional mold and try something different, and in my opinion, it paid off. 
Even though the Puma suede used materials that at the time were seen as luxurious, it didn't ever reach a price point that wasn't affordable. Even today, the Puma suede is one of the most affordable sneakers out there, and I would argue that it belongs in the collection of any real sneakerhead. And even though the suede is rather simplistic, the variation you get with the shoe is amazing. During the 2000s, Puma decided to take it up a notch with the releases of the suede and began releasing the shoe in every color possible. And I'm not sure if it's the suede material, but I think that the Puma suede looks amazing no matter what color you decide to go with. And it was also during this time that they cranked up the number of collaborations. And while some of them aren't exactly my style, I can at least appreciate what the designers did with the shoe. Today, the suede have more or less taken a step back from the limelight, and as of me writing this, the most promoted Puma sneaker, as of right now, are the Puma sneakers that are part of the Rihanna collaboration, and to be honest, I think they really botched their sneakers with this collab, but then again, these shoes aren't for me, so whatever. So, what do I think of the Puma suede personally? Well, I would say that they aren't my favorite sneaker per se, and that's mainly due to the reason that they just have a look that's too simple for my taste. But I do have I appreciate a good pair of suede, mainly because the last time I bought a pair of suede, which were just a normal pair with a white stripe, I got so many compliments from people. I've worn many sneakers throughout the years, but I have never gotten so much attention from people from when I wore suede, people telling me they look nice, where I got them, etc. And while it may have just been my ego that got stroked during that time, I still think that they are an amazing shoe, and I can also respect what it did for hip hop culture back then, and for black people as a whole. And while people may not appreciate it and treat it with the respect that it truly deserves, I still think that this shoe, which is over 50 years old at this point, deserves a spot as not only a sneaker classic, but a well-deserved status as a sneaker icon. I just hope that Puma can recreate the same magic with a new shoe as they did with this one. Well, that's all I have for you guys. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video and also leave a comment with your own thoughts on the Puma suede. I'm Sneaker Clef and I'll see you in the next video.